everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Knee Slapping K pop podcast. I am Kayla, and today I am joined with Sammy once again. Hello. And we are here to be doing a recap of Kingdom Round 3, Part 1. And I know we had originally yes. said we were going to do all of Round 3 together, but because we got six performances out of Round 1, and we're going to have six in Part 2. We figured we'd split it in half, and we also have a lot of opinions on round one. I already so. have so many thoughts. Yep. I have. I, I am, have so many thoughts and emotions. I'm livid. Like actually, we so are, many thoughts and emotions. St- if you ever want to see some, I know genuine anger is not a thing that happens in K-pop because everything is supposed to be happy and fun, and no form of negativity is should ever be addressed to anything. Uh, that is, one, if you've ever listened to this podcast, that is not this podcast. If you ever want to see true, genuine anger, stick around for oh, this yeah, episode. The anger is coming out full force this episode. <laughs> not that we've ever diluted no. our anger. I just don't think I've ever been this I've had, angry like, at a K-pop I've literally thing. had, I've gone through like a roller coaster of emotions, actually, about this entire round. And it's like the most emotions I think I've ever had, of like on a K-pop reality show, which is very weird. Um, that this Which is round... interesting because we did spend multiple months watching pro. Yes, and this and is the... Kingdom How Round Three Part One are... is what is made me the most emotional ever. Is uh. yes. So it's, it's been, been a lot. lot. We've gone through a lot the past two weeks now. Three Seems... weeks. Oh, three weeks. We... Yeah, nah. three weeks. But the emotions weren't there in like the th- first week of that. So, so like let's. I think we should just start with the first yeah. episode, which is the oh, nonsense also, one. Oh, also, um, so we're not talking about the the Stray Kids or the Icon performance that happened this last week's episode, because we're gonna do it with the other four that are gonna air next week. Next week? So we'll, you're yes. gonna get another episode next week. But also- So angry. Very angry. I don't like really anything that's going on there, I'm so- no- <laughs> I, I, you'll get our, you'll get our- long form reactions but the anger we continues. felt for part one is it's gonna possibly continue gonna round continue three a shit two. show apparently <laughs> possibly round three not good but let's begin with the episode that with weird us the field least, day which is got field, weird day. field day um so at's essentially split the groups into two teams because at's won round two so they got to pick their um their team for round three or the first half of round three and so they pick uh, Stray Kids and B2B. Because, and means, sure. I don't know why, really. Um, that's that, who they pick. And that means that Icon, The Boys, and SF9 are the other team. Yep. Just I, by default. I just like are. the fact that one group got all that, pa- like, seems like a interesting also, way to do it, but sure. I do, it also is a weird way to do it. I also want to point this out, that ATs did not actually win combined round two at all. SF9 won yes. round two. All scores combined. But because they didn't find that out for another two weeks, ATs was currently in first place with just the self evaluation and then the extra voting. So they got to pick their teams. Yeah, I But ge- SF9 won round two. Won. So. Actually won round two. And yep. Mnet is pulling their bullshit. And we'll mm-hmm. get to more Mnet bullshit that they've continued There's to pull. There's a lot. I, so I also have realized I have so many conspiracy theories about Mnet and the format of the show as well. And I don't put it past Mnet at all for any of these to, like, possibly be real, because, like, like Mnet's a disaster, the show's a disaster, so, like, anything of this could be anything real. Anything is like, possible, but also the fact of, like, Mnet, I don't, I wouldn't put it past Mnet that all of this is rigged anyway, because the I know. results are very playing into the storylines, and the fact that a lot of people have the defense of Mnet wouldn't rig anything post-produce. The problem with produce is that people were paying to vote. This yeah. show doesn't have that issue, so even if they rig it, it's not illegal. It doesn't matter. Because it doesn't the matter. Because are also so low to begin with. And no like, one's gonna investigate this, because produce is a no very different care. kind of yeah. show. No one cares. So, like, if they honestly, rig this, for this, it's fine. Yeah, and honestly, for this round, one of them is, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they picked these two teams themselves. Like, they could have just randomly said, we want ATs between Stray Kids in one team, and we want these three in the other team. Like, they could have just told them that. Like, I don't fully 100% believe that ATs got to pick their team for this round, really. It's just a lot, and a... We'll get into specifics in a minute, when we actually have what I'm angry about, but... 
So weird field day. Weird field day. They're going to play in teams on their split by their teams for round three, part one. Sure. And our first, we have some, oh, what's his name is there? Changman. Changman. Changman yeah. is there as, as host along with like randomly. They're going to rotate like MCs throughout the rounds or throughout the day. For, for some reason, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't what know. Different people are MCs. I don't think I ever saw a member of Stray Kids MC. Possibly. Who was there? Someone was there. Were they? Always. Yeah. And that's a, a Stray Kids I think it's oh, Changbin. They... I think Changbin oh. MC'd. Then I, for something, yeah. Then I choose to forget that he was there, apparently. Yeah. But. Um, so we start off with the hurdle jump thing? This weird, giant, like, large, like, very tall hurdle jumping game, which I don't- there's a name for it, I don't know yeah. what it is. Yeah, the- it's the very common- this is essentially the fact that they can't do idle sports day anymore yes. because of COVID, so that they did a mini one with so the So they do mini groups. sports day. This is essentially a high jump challenge thing. Yeah. You run at it, you jump on a trampoline, and you try to jump over this very large hurdle that gets and taller every round. And it gets taller every round. Every round. So yeah. they do it, everyone has one go of it, and for some reason we have to watch every, almost, not all of them, almost every single person do it. And not, but the person I wanted to see the most, we don't get to see. Who? We don't get to see Bobby. I want to see Bobby, I also wanted to see Chani, and I wanted to see Zuho. And we I got did. to see neither of and them. Because at the end, every person does it. For the most part, you see almost everyone attempt it, and if you obviously, if you fail, you're out. And then you just keep going. But you get at the end, oh, SF9, Chani, Zuho, da 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 didn't see We only failed. get, like, three people of SF9 who actually do it, and you only really see Insong fail at it. They don't show you anybody else, which is sad. Yeah. Because I really wanted to see Zuho attempt that hurdle. <laughs> I did. I want to see Chani attempt that hurdle, and Zuho attempt that hurdle, and I really want to see Bobby attempt that hurdle. I really want to see Bobby try to jump because over a hurdle. genuinely, the one I was most- because- in terms of that, SF9 is, like, fine. They they keep making the reference that they're very tall. So, like, the hurdle is not yeah, as so they tall come out as the, the first round and they're, SF9. Yeah, they come out there the first round and all of them are taller than the hurdle, so. Yeah, they're very tall. We thrive. Yeah. We thrive on tall SF9. Yep. But, um, so, like, about, I think, like, half of them accomplish it. And then the boys, almost everybody does. The boys, yep. great at this game. Then Icon goes out there, and Icon describes themselves as not at all <laughs> athletic, because look at them. Look at them. Look Just at them. Take a look at Icon. <laughs> look at Icon. I'm not saying that they're not, like, they're cute boys, but, like, athleticism, they, don't they do are sports. Frat, they're Icon does not do boys. sports. Icon no. is not a sports group. Like, they're the, like, the, the other thing I want to point out is the outfits they're wearing. SF9 does this in jeans. They do. I don't know why they're wearing jeans to sports day. Because everybody gets a color. I feel like everybody got a color. SF9's was, like, white because they're all, white like, white. White with jeans. White yeah. and jeans, apparently, because that's what we do sports day in is white and jeans. You gotta do white white t-shirt with jeans and, like, ah, yes, the very, very practical sports day outfit But, like, they did great. Some, like, they do decently because they're just tall, athletic Because they're tall, yeah. Yeah. And, again, even if you have no athleticism, if you're tall, you're automatically at a more better advantage. And then the boys is yellow, which is cute. And then Icons is red, which of yeah. course it is. And, and that then, just makes sense for Icon. That makes sense for Icon, but also they look like frat boys. They really so do. So often. I think June is wearing a polo shirt. It's Which just is like hilarious. I think, it's like I don't know if they know they're being styled like frat boys, but they are for sure. They're, I don't. I think Bobby might because he lived in America and might know what a frat boy is. Yeah, but they are being styled like frat boys, and we're living for it. Also, I love just over this three episode stretch of just seeing Icon's will to be on this show just deteriorate into nothing. Well, no, like, Icon wanders over for this like trip, and it's like one, we're not athletic. Two, we don't, and, like, they don't look, they look like they're just doing it because they have to, and they're like, I mean, I'm not gonna try to fail and Does Bobby myself. do, like, a single thing in sports no. day? Because I don't think he does actually Bobby's participate in anything. the least athletic person. Bobby, love Bobby. We adore love Bobby. I love him so much. I love Bobby. Bobby is coming out of this winning, but. I recently I, had a rediscovery of his album. Yes, it's actually quite good. I listened to part of it today. 
what I will say is if you if you told me if you gave me all of these people and were like, well, who is the least athletic person? It's Bobby. Bobby's the Bobby, least athletic person here. Bobby's there to sit in the tents and like laugh at people the whole laugh time. Laugh at people Bobby and make a for. joke. We yeah. live. We thrive. I also want to point out that for some reason, because I think his name is Changman, they they essentially are very enthused for Changman of the boys who is Q. Oh yes. They love very, Q. very thriving. So like Icon does okay. Yep. Some people do well, some people... We don't get to see Bobby, which I was upset I'm about. I'm very sad we don't get to see Bobby, but I'm pretty sure, like, Bobby was like, you cannot show me doing this jump on this show. No, like, I refuse. how much do like, I have to pay you? Not just that, but he's like, look, if you want me to be in the performances, I ain't doing this shit. I yeah. wouldn't put a pass him to be like, no, I'm not doing it. He's like, I'm I will show up sports day, it. but I will not participate in sports day. No. Also, I just want to point out, we did talk about the boys, but I want to point out that Kevin is insane. Kevin is actually an insane person. <laughs> Kevin is twerking. Actively Kevin twerking at is any other having a time of his life at this sports day. You can really tell which teams we're more enthused about. Because then oh, we get yeah. to the other team where, like, apparently Stray Kids does fine, I guess. I ATs does fine, I guess. And then B2B, B2B is having, like, the time of their life at Oh, no, sports B2B, day. I think, is very excited to just feel young again and do sports. I know. And so, for one, um, so only, because Unkwang is emceeing this part, so it's only Peniel and Minhyuk who are well, there, no, really. Unkwang does try it, but he fails the first one. Yeah. So, like, Unk, uh, Peniel and then Peniel and, Peniel and Minhyuk. Minhyuk do surprisingly very well. well like, they do so Minhyuk well. Minhyuk has been doing, because, again, most of these groups are such babies that they barely got to do Idol Sports Day to begin with. Yeah. And then Minhyuk, I mean, all of B2B has been doing it for years because they're years old. Now, since, like, and Minhyuk is apparently, yeah. like, that's his thing. He's is that real he good at the high jump. He, he just... did, like, he did one that was, like, two and a half meters tall once. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, how the hell? Sure, I guess, that's fine. But, like, he is, they show that clip so much. They do. They really do. But they're having fun with this. Yeah. My big problem with this game, it's very boring to watch. And it is. it is 40 minutes of this episode, as you get to watch people one at a time jump over a hurdle. And I'm and like, this is the most pointless thing we could be spending time on right now. Because that's the thing with, like, if they had done the first one, because they do it for, like, I think it starts off at, like, one and a half, and we get up to, like, over two meters, and it goes, like, four It rounds. goes way too long, the round. Oh I my god, it goes like, so long. I feel like if we had gotten that whole first round where you get to see everybody do it, and then yeah. speed up. And we cut out everything shorter. until the end. Yeah. And the like, problem with that them, but is that the other two games are so short that they have to fill the time with it because it's the only thing they have because the other two or, games take like five minutes. Or, hear me out, don't make the episode an hour and a half long if all you have is filler sports day episodes. I would have liked literally any, literally anything else <laughs> doing except for jump, like over jumping the hurdle game for 40 minutes. Like... Give us, like, another, like, impromptu game or give us some fun, like, group interactions. Like, I don't want to watch people jump over a hurdle. Like, that's not what I'm watching the show for. Like, like the fact so that this boring. was only three games, there's a reason Idol Sports say is not only four Like, oh, the reason God. that they diversify it to be, like, 18 different games. I know. And they, they keep adding more. We literally could have done, like, fucking, like, rock, paper, scissors like bracket or something and i would have been more entertained by that than you know what they could have done the for 40 you know what, minutes you know what the, you know what i think would be really fun but i don't think they can do it because possibly injury but also i feel like this was probably caused more injuries do what they did on produce which was the arm wrestling competition oh i would have loved arm back. wrestling or something yeah yeah do an arm wrestling i feel like you get more like because it's way two more people fun. against each other yeah if the teams are roughly even, because you have... Uh, they're not. They're not, they're not, not really. One team has significantly more people on But, it. like, even out the teams, just pick your pick, pick your best you people. You gotta pick, like, yeah, four people. Boom. Like, give me, like, four people, and then that's it. Which is essentially all of Icon. I yep. want to see Icon try to arm wrestle a member of... I, I think don't know, Geo just destroys everyone. We say that, but they're not athletic at all, they we've aren't, realized. But, like, I feel like Geo would, like, like, crush for somebody. Yeah. I feel like June's crazy. Because they're frat boys. Oh, yes. I, feel, I feel like, like that'd be really that, fun. 
if we spent, f- I would rather spend 40 minutes watching them do an arm wrestling bracket, because the thing with arm wrestling is that you have that banter back and forth. Yeah. And you can watch, like, an underdog and some shit, and, like, you can see that actually evolve, because it's not just watching someone jump over, run, and jump. Yeah. It's like two I people are rather, actively there. I would have rather them take 10 or 15 minutes and just show us them having lunch together. Like, I oh, yeah. mean, that would have been more interesting. Like, that would have been more interesting than what we're doing here. That'd uh, be fun. Or they could have showed us some, like, pre-performance prep stuff, because they gave us all these extra clips of the team's meetings. You could have shoved some of that into this episode. Like, we didn't have to put it all in the other one. Like, you could have started that now. We have a lot of opinions about we didn't what, how this, this episode... Oh my god, it was M-Net. so useless. It was the most useless episode ever. <laughs> Mnet, please contact us. We have so many options to make your shows better. Queendom had, like, a barbecue party or something this round when they when Queendom was airing. And it was, like, much more interesting because it was more yeah. so just fun group interactions and, like, we weren't playing a competition that was very boring. True, but Queendom also had that weird thing where, like, they found all of each other in that house situation where they See, tried to- and I also find that, that more interesting than what this is, though, because at least it's, like, I don't know, this was just so boring. Again, like, I did not need to have, watch people jump over a hurdle. This show didn't ten episodes. It could have been- no. And nine. Cut this episode entirely. And, like, we don't need it. Like, we just get rid of it. That's annoying. Alright, so then we go to the actual, ep- the actual content after we've spent 15 minutes on the non-content. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's two other games. They're boring. There are two other games. It's, they do the one where it's, like, you have to stand in, like, a line all holding on to each other. And, and one then, person like, has a balloon. And then it's like the top, there's a person in the front of the line has to pop the balloon from the person on the back of the line of the other team. Um, yeah. Icon is not good at this game because they essentially, because you're not supposed to let go of each other and Icon does that constantly and then yeah. they, they lose Because again, round, but Icon, like, you know, not expected. athletic. Yeah. YG did not train any of their idols to be at all athletic. They don't yeah. dance. You no, think they can keep they up? Don't. No. No, but it is very funny. Eric also, like, very crazy during that game. <laughs> the boy's really funny. just insane. Living yeah. living for it, though. And then the last game they do is just a relay. And yeah. I think this is fun just because it's, like, a gradual decline of SF9 starting off in first place and then coming in last place by a lot by the time yeah. it's over. <laughs> I think they just picked the, like, subsequently picked slower people. It was hilarious. I know, because they have Chani at the end. Like, why do you have Chani as your relay finisher? Like, why is that the person you chose here? Because it really is. Like, Chani is, like, a half a lap behind everyone else by the Poor time he crosses baby. the finish line. <laughs> Chani's got a lot of... Look, we have a lot of opinions about Chani's career. It's Chani's been a, career it's been is, a is, a, is a ride. <laughs> it's something. But, like, it's fun. So, that's that was Idol Sports Day this year. Oh, do you want to know? Do you want to talk about the, the flower, the visual ranking of the... Oh, yeah. I don't count that as sports, sports day. day. That the, the, sports, the sports competitions are done. Yes. Now we get to the visual ranking where the visual every, ranking of every single day. person gets to pick, vote for one person as the visual of Kingdom. Much like they, I think they're essentially just taking the games that they did on Produce and doing them here. Yes, we're going to vote for the F4 of Kingdom, essentially, is what this is. One, never call them an F4. Foiler Flowers was about like 12 years ago at this point. Move yeah. on. No one cares, and it was a terrible show. But they all but, have very, they have bad hair also on that show. Yes. But also, um, everyone starts putting out people, they're like, oh, Minhyuk, oh, Changbin's cute, different people, and I'm like, who, what? A lot of opinions were had. It first, was a, it's a Rowan's weird- It's not there. Rowoon's so, not there. If Rowoon's there, Rowoon is first place. Like, that's how that works if Rowoon was present. <laughs> Here's the thing. I think we gotta fit- So, the F4 is there's a tie for fourth place with three votes, because of course there is. And it's a tie between Unquang and- Hyunjae. Hyunjae. Not mm-hmm. Weejun, who I said. No. There is no member different, of the voice called Different Wee person. June. Yeah. So, um, it's those two in fourth place, which- Sure. Hyunjae, Hyunjae, yes. Like, I get Hyunjae, Unquang. No. That was a choice. 
That was a choice. And Clang and Clang and fo- tied for fourth. I'm like, why? How did this happen? How did this happen? Then in third, is Sun we Wu. have Sun Wu from The Boys. Also, not the other member of The Boys I would choose. Um, no. But Sun Wu is fine. He's yeah. cute. Then second is Felix. Good. Yeah, Felix I like cute. Felix. Very cute. Felix is cute. Felix is very cute. And then number one is Min Hyuk from B2B. Which is, sure, Which is, I get that. Sure, I get it. He's also a senior idol. You probably want to vote for your senior idols. Yeah. Looking at those five as the F4 <laughs> of Kingdom. <laughs> that, because, that's your sure. F4 of visual line of Kingdom. Um, I have a lot of thoughts. Kayla, it's I think we gotta weird. come up with our with the correct visual line. Alright, so Rowoon Rowoon, yes. I think we gotta play by the kingdom rule for the kingdom rules, which is Rowoon doesn't Rowan's count. Not, but Rowoon is in, in Rowoon is number one. Rowoon is beyond He is so far beyond <laughs> He is so else. far beyond everyone else. I don't think we can put him in the same league. It's not fair to everyone else. Yeah, so Rowan, I think Minhyuk, God tier. So I think Minhyuk gets to stay. Minhyuk does get to stay. I also think Hyunjae gets to stay. Uh, is that the member of the boys we want? I think he is their visual, like Very Hyun Jae. Well. Yeah. Very well. I think we get to keep Hyun Jae. I think we gotta bring San or Sung Hwa from I Aegis. think San probably comes in. I think San or Sung Hwa. I want to put Sung Hwa, because I think he's... Yeah. I think we put Sung Hwa from ATs. And then... Who is our... Who else do we who have? Who is our fourth? Um... Who I'm trying I'm like completely I forgotten oh, who was on June? Kingdom. I don't think June. I think June's cute. Um Uh Felix, do we keep Felix? Felix can stay. Like, that's fine. I'm like not upset with Felix being there. Yeah. I also like that you made an F four when there are six gr- like there's five How many people are yeah. Yeah, there's like genuinely I th- Wait. 19. I got- I'm gonna do mental math now of, like, how many people are in Kingdom. Let's oh, no! Quick... SF9! 10 plus 9. Yeah. Who from SF9? That's not Rowan. It's like, because after Rowan, it's like, who is- who's second place after Rowan? It's like, probably Zuho or Hui Young, I think. I think Hui Young could be up there. Yeah. I, I think- I th- oh, I think our four is- not in order, obviously. Minhyuk. Minhyuk Sunghwa. Minhyuk Hyun- Sunghwa. Hyunjae and Hui Young. Hyunjae and Hui Young. I did almost call him Hui Jun again. I apologize. That's, why my, that's where my brain paused. That's why I stopped talking. I was just like focusing on the fact of like what is his name and it's not Hui Jun. Yes. Hui Jun of MCND is not on the show. <laughs> he isn't, but his name has been Sweet in my boy, brain. He's not here. <laughs> Sweet boy. Love him. He's not here, and I don't know why no. the name Hui Jun is in my head today. <laughs> and I also apologize to Hyunjae, mm-hmm. because I can't get your name right, and I think it's Hui Jun. It's not. Yes. But I think that's R4, that's a better F4. four. F4. That's F4. the F4. That's the knee slapper F- Kingdom F4. Yes. So now, after Kingdom Sports Day and visual ranking, we have actual content now, finally. Yay. After we've wasted a week on absolutely nothing. So yes. we're going to start the the group um, unit performances, which is, this is, they've set up this round very differently than they've set up rounds in the past, where they split them into group two groups of three, and each group can decide to send whoever they want to send to these performances of each. Um, and however many people they want, too. Mm-hmm. So, Which and is a I bad idea. Was a bad idea, number they one. They gave and them I think, too much freedom. I think this whole round comes down to the fact that one of the teams understood the assignment and the other team did not understand the assignment. Yes. One really of what the this teams is. picked a representative and they did... a pick the best person for the job yes. the other group essentially tried to slot every member of every single group into some performance which, which is not the way idea. you're supposed to do this that's not the way this mount round is meant to happen like because you're not supposed to do that <laughs> because you end up with performances that have three people in them you end up with performances that have seven people in them and you have performances that end with like 20 but then like, like 12 oh, but or there's like nine people. people in that dance performance or yes. something like so, um, not to spoil it, but to spoil it, the round goes where the first team that performs is always the good one. Yep, and the then good the team second will go team, first. And then the bad team will go. 
And yep. as you'll notice, the sa- it's the same order where it's one team and then the other team. So let's, let's, I mean, they do come up with team names. Do we want to address them by team name and not well, just yeah, by who's so, there? Yeah, so the SF9 icon, the boys team is called It's One, which is a cute team name. Yeah, it is cute. And then, and then the, the AT's, other team is called May- AT's Straight, straight Kids, kids B2B. B2B. It's called Mayfly. Yes. So not it's as one cute, is always going to go first. Yeah. Yes. It's one is gonna go first, and then Mayfly is gonna go second every single time. Every time, and we which is a weird, a weird way I think to format the round because I think it is a little bit unfair to have one team always go first and one team um, always get to go second. Yes. Yep. And then you'll notice that the second team wins every round. So. <laughs> oh, also we want to mention the um the judges. Oh my god, we have to talk about the the, the special panel judges here because it was a, a time that this oh it was a choice. So instead of doing the typical voting format for this round three part one, because part two is gonna have the regular voting format, but part one, Kingdom has decided we're gonna bring in a special panel of judges, and there's 33 people on this panel, and so on this panel we have um, Dong Hae and Shin Dong of Super Junior. Sure. And then we have Leah Kim, a choreographer. And then they, yes. they handpicked about eight or nine people who have been on that expert panel of judges they've been going to in the past for all of these previous things. Yes. So it's like a Primer and Mono Tree, Shin Dong Tiger. There's like a music video producer in there. Like there's like actual like K-pop songwriting, like music video. So people far, there. we're good. So we're far, good. we are. So far, we are living. And then and we that's get about to... twelve people. That's about twelve people of this Mind thirty-three you, person panel. Yes. Mind you, that is not a majority. That is no. less than half. Less than half. Shall we get um, to the more than half part of this? The more than half part of this panel is made up of rookie K-pop groups. And by Some, rookie, we mean <laughs> this year or late last we're year. We're gonna talk about, like, two of them being, like, two... One in, like, like two month, months... One like in two month. months old at this point. And then a group that's under, still under a year. And then the other group, I think, is, I think, a year and a half. But, like, very, like, unknown group, so. So we have members of Mirei, Tribe, Weekly, and BDC all on the panel. And they make up the rest of the panel. Which is a majority rookie groups that have no expert, like, I don't, again. Why are they here? Why are they an I, so, expert on? I know how we fix this. Because I don't mind if we have rookie groups on the panel, but they can't be more than half of the panel. No. Like, you get, like, four or five of them, sure. That's fine. We That's have an audience gro- surrogate, rookie, if you sure. will. Sure. Um, what I think they do is I think they get people from Road to Kingdom and from Queendom on as judges to fill out the rest of the panel. Yeah. And obviously they can't mom. use, like, she AOA. Doing they anything. can't use AOA. They can't use G-Idol. But they can put, oh, my girl, they can get Mamamoo. They can get Park Bomb. She ain't doing anything. They can get Park Bomb. Well, maybe they don't get Park Bomb because maybe she has connections to Icon. Like, I don't think they can use the groups that are in the same company as the groups on Kingdom. True. But they can get I... Oh My Girl. They can get Mamamoo, I think. Or somebody yeah. from that. They can get a bunch of... Yeah. And then they can get, um... They can what? use Golden Child. Golden Child. They can use T01. Two, two. Yeah, T01. Great they promotion. They can use ONF. ONF. They can use very, very... They can use literally all of the groups from Out to Kingdom. Yeah, just I guess they back. can... I think they probably don't get too many of them because I think they are concerned that maybe they're going to favor the boys because they did Still, all of the show with them I, already. No one can... I don't think anyone... But, like, I would much cares. rather them have Road to Kingdom and Queendom people than us having, like, 20-something members of these groups that are barely but available. also the fact that like there's so many of them you don't even there's get so any many of them. clear image of who's there because they're bouncing around with different people who i've only seen once or twice because they're it so took new. me so long to figure out like who was even on this panel i heard there's rookie g- groups on the panel i'm like sure but can anyone like, but tell me who, who these it? people are yeah yeah and it's the fact of again you don't get a clear picture there's so many there's like 15 of them so like Every time they cut to a rookie panel member, it's a different person. They have no name associated with them. No one ever translates who that person is. There's so I two don't know people. if this is a... Like, who is there, this? There's two people they go to very often. There's a girl from Tribe they go to all the time. They go to Dong Pill from Mi Ray because he's the X1 kid. And mm-hmm. I see him a lot, but of course they're going to show him the most because people know him. Of course. And of course they show Shin Dong and Dong Hae and Leah Kim a lot. Like, all your actual professional people, because people also know them. Yeah. So. 
And, like, the people that actually should be there. Like, I'll even take the, like, Dong, if Dong Hei and uh, Shin Dong are just happen to be at, again, our conspiracy theory, this is just whoever was on M Countdown that Yeah, week. it was like they just pulled a bunch of people from M Countdown. It was like, cool, you want to judge Kingdom Legendary War for a day? Like, and, like of course they're going to say yes. Like, Yeah, it's like after the M Countdown, they're like, hey, you want to stick around for a couple hours? You got anything to do? Sure, just come. And it's, like, the the fact that you have these expert people who have, their vote has the same amount of weight as these random rookie K-pop members is very weird. And I think it's really the fact that they're taking up so much of the panel. Like, over half of the panel, that's yeah. what's doing it. The fact of the Especially matter- because the way the votes work out for two of the rounds, it's, like, a 20, 22, 21 to, like, 10 or 11 split. Mm-hmm. And that's how every single performance comes out. And I'm like, this is what's happening when you're having all of the rookie people on. Yeah. Having and this again, much control all over of that. the rookie people have, again, they get influenced by what's popular. They they want to meet people. They want to be popular like certain of some of these groups. And they obviously favor the groups that are slightly younger, that are geared toward people their age. Yeah. The younger I'm... groups get an advantage. I'm sorry to say that. Yeah, and, like, there is one team full of, like, the older groups, and then there's the team with B2B, and then the two younger groups, so. Yeah. You and see the groups that are, out. again, currently very popular and very much cited as an influence. Oh, so I think it's the beginning of round, or the beginning of this round, where they reveal the full rankings for, like, combined votes for every, all of the rounds up until this point. Yeah. And it's funny that the way these teams were split is you have the first, second, and third place groups in one team, and the fifth, fourth, fifth, and sixth place groups on the other team. Yes. And I'm like, this is, like, really not the ideal way to split your teams into just, no, like, top isn't. half and bottom half for this round. And mind and you, look at, look at the teams. Look at the yeah. teams and look at who it would be more beneficial if they win. Yeah. Because I think Emin is also looking at Okay, sure. Any of these groups technically have the opportunity to win this show and get an Mnet reality show. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that Mnet reality show still has to get views. So, of all of these groups, which one will get the most views? I'm sorry. I wonder, I wonder which of these two teams they want to have a reality show. I, do you, like, it's like, I wonder. S- I wonder, really. I really wonder which of these... Because, again, I think that, no offense to SF9... They're great. I I, I would personally watch it. They do not want it. an SF9 reality show. They don't want an Icon reality show. They don't want a don't wanna, The Boys reality show. They also show. don't want a B2B reality show. That's they, not gonna, I think, you know what? I think uh, they might want a B2B reality show. I think that might show. be the, I think that might be third choice because I think that a lot of people it's probably tune third choice. B2B is crazy. But I do think they wouldn't mind a B2B reality show. No, I think that they're crazy enough. Like, B2B is like, a like, crazy enough group. at variety shows. Yeah. yeah. But, and I, and I think the problem is that the two groups that they want happen to be two groups that they are very much pushing. Mm-hmm. Yep. But we'll get to that. Let's start off All with right, let's the, stop with the, the rap, best the performance rap, rap. in this entire, one of the best performances in this entire show, any In this entire, like, series of shows, The generally. series, Queendom, Road to Kingdom, Kingdom Legendary, we're all of it. This all is, of this them. Is, we are going to do a ranking of all of these shows. This is like, going to be all top of the, there. This is going. This is top five, possibly, probably top three, maybe number one. Honestly, and, Kayla. this is my most watched performance from any of these shows ever. I want this on Spotify. I think I. You know, I think part of the reason is because it didn't get put on Spotify, but I love it so much. It's it's uh, and it's like this is also. Okay, so we're gonna probably describe what this performance is, but you probably know what we're talking about already. It's full dash! Um, so this is the It's One rap performance of Bobby of Icon, Hui Young of SF9, and Sunwoo of the Boys. Oh my god, I love it. This is also the one of performance where I have, like, so many emotions about it because it's the most wholesome thing I've ever seen in my life, and it's I love it so much. It's it like, is so it's adorable. It's somehow, like, both badass and the sweetest the little thing I've ever seen. The absolute thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, it's so good. Uh, I love, I, I absolutely love everything going on with this performance from, like, the actual friendship that has happened to, like, their cute interactions beforehand to, like, the actual mm-hmm. performance. It's, like, everything about it is so good. It's, like, everything I could have, like, ever asked for. I love this. it. It's so good. So, um, there's a, 
So, the one thing that I was curious about was that why SF9 sent Hui Young instead of Zuho to rap. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of theories as to why. So, I think, so number one is that I don't think Zuho really wanted to do it. I don't think Zuho's very into Kingdom as a show. And no. I don't think wants to be I putting think in you this can extra very, effort. I think you can very clearly tell the groups that have members. I mean, I feel like it's a, a pretty even split of people that are super invested and people that yeah. are like, I'm here. I work like, here. I'm not yeah. trying to, f- I'm not gonna bomb it, but, like, right. you know, like, I'm not are, gonna put are, in- It's very easy to see there are members of SF9 who care about it a lot more than other members. Um, Zuho, not one of the members I think that particularly cares to be on the show. Um, another thing is because, this is back to my Mnet conspiracy theory thing, but you have Bobby, who is one, Show Me the Money 3, and then you have Sunwoo, who was on High School Rapper 1, and Young was on High School Rapper 2. And I think they probably wanted the three of those together, to have yes. all of their shows represented there. Not just I that, think but also- thing I think that's would have loved. Yeah, and it just so happened that Young and Sunwoo happen to be people that are actually invested in this show, and do actually want to do a great rap performance. Because I also think they- that- if SF9 was incredibly concerned about winning, they probably sent Zuho, but Huyong says in his interview thing that he doesn't really get the chance to do these, like, hype of hip-hop songs that he really likes just because of SF9's, like, concept as a whole. And so yeah. I think Zuho probably let him come to this because he wanted to give him, like, the chance to do it. Yeah. And I think that Zuho has, I mean, Zuho does put out more solo stuff. Zuho, Zuho does a lot of SoundCloud music. He produces yeah. his own stuff. Hui Young doesn't really do that. Hui Young doesn't do that. Hui Young's being more pushed as an actor. Yeah. And I do think that if Zuho, like, Zuho has more explored that area as in his SoundCloud and all his other stuff. Yeah, Zuho so has like, more of an outlet has to an do what he wants. Yeah, yeah, he can do whatever he wants. So I think if Hui Young is just like, I, I don't get, I will never get this opportunity to do a show me the money style performance, which again, right. I think a lot of idol rappers don't get that. And the fact no. that he gets to do that with Bobby, one of the oh, only yeah. idols that has not only done well, like you most won, idols do so show me the money. Like if you watch show me the money and if oh, I don't really watch show me the money cause I don't like that style anymore. But like show me the money is a rap show like it is i've watched Bobby's actual season of show me the money it and is and that's like he also didn't win like an easy season of no show me the money, it had like, a all. lot of good people on it too yeah and like show me the money is not like if you're a k-pop fan and you know k-pop rap that that's not what show me the money is no most idols all. that go and show me the money do terribly horribly almost horribly. every single idol except for bobby and bi and you know have done horribly on show me the money yeah Every like, single one. Other than YG rappers who were rappers before, that's that's the that's the bar there. you have to be. And yeah. I genuinely think that like the fact that he's like, I wanna do a show me the bunny thought performance because you don't get to do that and Bobby knows how to make those good and knows how, like how to thrive in this environment. Oh, yeah. And I also think Bobby is excited to just get to do this again because again in his I, he gets to do it in his solo music and he got to do that in that solo album which was mm-hmm. very good yeah but in icon he doesn't get to do that and he also and doesn't get to do that with people because k-pop solo albums don't really do collaborations like that but here's some like funny like just behind the scenes stuff that was happening with this because bobby did a v live like the day after that episode aired where he was answering questions about kingdom um so firstly fun story um Someone asked Bobby if he's been drinking recently, and he said he hasn't because of Kingdom, because apparently he drank four beers before they filmed those intro performances and showed up either hungover slash maybe still drunk and got yelled at by his manager for it. Because and I'm so sorry, now he that's can't funny. Drink anymore. That's so funny. funny. It's so funny <laughs> to think of Bobby in, is just like completely either drunk or hangover during that intro performance is incredibly funny to me. He, and then he also said he really did not want to do this rap round at all because Bobby does not want to be here. Bobby no. does not like the I show. Bobby does Bobby, not want to be here. I think Bobby is one of those... I think all of Icon has reached the point where they're like, well, we have to be here. Like, it's not that they... It's like that this is just not their style of music. This is not yeah. their... That they've already done so many competition shows. They're like, one, this doesn't matter. Two, I think they've realized that they're being set they're up not gonna to fail. Win. Yeah. They're being set up to fail. Yep. And I think that YG is also, especially as you'll see in the next round, 
using them to promote YG Other as a brand. People, YG is generally, like, yes. Like, just a brand of YG, because Icon can have nothing for themselves ever, yep. and never will. Nope. But I think that they're just done, and I think Icon as a group, I wouldn't be surprised if Icon as a group is starting to get done I can, I can really, I can really see it in the round three part two performance. I can just tell, like, Icon is, like, not having it anymore. (laughs) And that's not a thing that we're thinking that they're, like, basically, because they're still giving it 100% in the performance. Yeah. But you can tell that, like, the pat, and you can't fake that. Yeah. And I understand 100%. I do not blame them at all. No. Um, But. So Bobby almost sent Chan Wu to the rap performance. Why Chan Wu? Um, but then apparently Bobby said that he, that after he met Hui Young and Sun Wu, and both of them were very passionate about wanting to do, like, a, you know, show me the money style, like, actual hip-hop performance, because they'd never had the chance for it anymore, he was, like, inspired to, like, work really hard in order to give them that, because they had such, they reminded him of, like, a younger version of him who were very, like, passionate about hip-hop, but were also having, like, this conflict of character, because it doesn't necessarily 100% fit the group that they're in. And so he um, and I think they 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 formed such a genuine it's so friendship. Cute. Oh my god, it's the cutest thing ever. And then Bobby himself doesn't even give himself like a full rap verse no. of the song. He gets the chorus and he gets the bridge and he gives the full rap verses to Hui Young and Sun Lu because I think he genuinely really wanted them to like shine and like have and the thrive. stage that they had always wanted. And it's like, so cute. <laughs> and the thing is, this is I mean, not saying that. Hui and or Sun Woo are bad rappers. Not saying that they haven't given... Not that saying that they've never done good performances. I'm just saying that in terms of pure rap, because this is not an idol rap performance. This oh, is a this genuine hip-hop performance. This is a show, me, this is a show perform- me the money performance. show me the money performance. Oh, yeah. If this was on show me the money, I'd be like, no, great show me the money performance. This is it, yeah. And this is the best they've ever sounded. It's like Bobby is like just him and his like just vibe that he has and like the way that he's just so effortlessly able to like do this type of music is like really pulling out the best of both yes. Hee Young and Sun Woo in because this performance. Because he just even in the behind the scenes, you see that he's like, no 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 no. Just vibe. Just vibe with it and it will come. And it came and it came naturally. This seemed I, it's, so it's natural. So, it's so good. And I Even, do think he was also, because I think the boys had, as a whole group, had sort of been in this like very weird mental state slump. with Kingdom where they were very focused on winning and thinking they had all these expectations to hold up to from Road to Kingdom. And I definitely think Bobby was able to pull Sun Wu out of that mindset and be like, look. I want you to have fun on the stage. The stage is like, we don't need to win, but I want you to have a lot of fun. And Sun was even said in his confessionals and stuff that is like, you know, I didn't get it at first. Like, we're just going to have fun. But then he was like, but I'm so happy right now. Like, this is the happiest I've been on this show. I didn't realize you could be happy while filming this show. And I'm having so much fun. Because Bobby is also like one of Sun Wu's like, biggest like like cheerleaders inspirations really so but then he became like his biggest cheerleader like i know no, and you it, can do this and he gave them such confidence and i was so happy for everyone I'm so involved happy it's like the uh, it's, i love uh, everything so it was much. the most wholesome situation and i it's the most wholesome it. thing ever and it's so and cute. even though when they say the words full dash it sounds like fuck that shit that's what I think, yeah, I 100% love that. This song is called Full Dash, and it's essentially just fuck that shit. Like, because that's, it's great. And, like, I just like that Bobby, even in his, like, you see it in his albums, like, he's able to censor himself so perfectly where he censors himself without censoring himself. Yeah. It's great. We live. Mm-hmm. And he does that here, and that really just makes it, he was giving his all to this performance. Oh, yeah. And I do think that this is, like, Bobby has, not saying Bobby hasn't been doing thing, but this is Bobby in his element. Oh, yeah. This and is, like, like where just... Bobby is, like, thriving, like, 100%. Like, this is what he does, what he does really well, and he can do it so effortlessly. It's just And, like, you can, amazing. like, the genuine connection of, like, Bobby went to go get them at, the, like, he went to go get them from their he dressing room. He go gets Hui Young from his dressing room. Oh, yeah, so another thing, Hui Young bought both. I think Sun Woo and Bobby shoes because it was Sun Woo's birthday, and so Hui Young showed up to their second meeting and had shoes for both of them. And so like, then the two of them bought the same pair of shoes for Hui Young. And then Aww. during the performance, they wrote each other's fandom names on their yeah, shoes. And while well, during the performance, yeah, because um, Bobby had Fantasy, Hui Young had the B, and then Sun Woo had Iconic. 
it's so, on oh the my shoes. God. And it's on the, the shoes. It's so cute. Thing. <laughs> oh. Oh my god, it's it's literally like the most emotional I've ever been about like, the so show and happy. It's because it was so wholesome. I was like, oh my god, it I was love it the so much. cutest little thing I've ever seen. They looked so genuinely happy. I like, know this because was, like this obviously was... they're doing this like high this like just really hype like uh, like intense show me the money performance. As soon as they're done rapping, they're just immediately like hugging, like, adorable. Like they're so they're, cute, like, the like, sweetest like, little boys. I love them. They're, like, so cool, and the vibe is just there, and the thing with it is that, like, there's a natural confidence yeah. to them, which is amazing, and, like, there's a natural charisma there that uh, they've never been able to showcase, because, again, you think about this, and you're like, oh, could they pull this off, and you're like, well, da 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 you've never seen it, yeah. and then if you're just put in a comfortable situation, they're able to do it masterfully. This is a show me the money performance. This is one of the best songs of this year, genuinely. It's so good. And I don't love like really hip hop songs that much. Occasionally no. they'll come along and I'm like, this is great. This is one of those where I'm like, this song is like amazing. Like I yeah. need it on Spotify like right now. It's so good. And I mean this does have uh, a I mean this is an original so song, Kayla. We could put this on the top ten of the year. We could, I mean We could. We could. Yep. Not just putting that out there to the universe. We could. It might show up in like six months on the ten, top ten songs in twenty twenty. I mean, let's be honest, Kayla. It's that and butter. the song that came, butter that came out today. Yep, butter thriving Those are on butter. Top songs of the year right now. <laughs> Full dash and butter. Full dash and butter. <laughs> I told you I'd be able to get butter in here. And we did. Here we are. Here we are. Butter. Talking about butter. <laughs> But back to this. Loved it. Wholesome. I think we gotta move on to the other one. Because we're I almost do. an hour in and we have five more I, performances. I know. It, um, I'm, I don't like the other one. It's so the other one is Mayfly. And they are doing their song. I don't remember what the song I is don't called. remember. I think it's in Korean, so I don't remember the name of it, honestly. Because I don't so, like it at all. <laughs> yeah, so essentially in this we have three Racha. Yep. Of Changbin, Bang Chan, Han... Yeah, Jisung. Yep. And then Hong Joong from AT is and yep. Min Hyuk from B2B. And They call themselves per- five they call themselves five Racha, by the way, which I don't love because no. really cause Stray Kids wasn't already like the center of the universe enough that we had to really just hammer like, the nail hammer, into that more. Yeah. yeah but, but, plus the fact of like why is three Racha just here? It really came to the front of my mind, this performance and the Stray Kids next round performance. Like, how much I dislike how prevalent 3 Racha is just, like, Stray Kids. Like, it's it's kind of, like, annoying how much those three are just the whole group and everyone else seems to be an accessory on 3 Racha. They are! Because I do genuinely think that, um, 3 Racha just wanted to be a trio, but JYP was like, I don't do hip-hop, make yeah. a boy band. And that's how Stray Kids was formed, because I genuinely think that 3 Racha gets so much. And 3 Racha is Stray Kids, because you see them talk about making songs, and they only talk about 3 Racha. It's like, I feel the like i vocals I've only, are an afterthought. I feel like I've only ever seen 3 Racha on this show, generally, as a whole. Like, I only yes. ever see the three of them, and that's all I am told is important. Like Yes, no one else is important. Sangman gets, I think, he gets actually to do something because he's in the vocal performance and he's the only Stray Kids member in that. But that's, like, other than that, I'm, like, all I've been thrown in my face is only three Racha. Yes. And you have all these other people who are just kind of, like, all there. there just to fill the space, apparently. And so this performance is just essentially each of them I get a verse. It's three Racha and also... Kind of featuring Hong Joon because it really, he, honestly, Hong Joon doesn't do a lot of anything no, but in the, the thing, performance. The weird thing is, is that Hong Joon has never sounded like this. This is the Hong worst Joon I've is, ever heard Hong Joon rap in his career, and I'm like, why does career. he sound so bad? Because like, the thing is, he just sounds like Three Racha. It's three like he Racha changed his whole style no of rap, rap to, yeah, yes. to be Three Racha, and I'm like, why are you doing this? You sound so bad, like. Because it's not think, the way. I mean, a lot of people will say, well, Bobby just sounds like himself. Here's here's the difference between the way Bobby's doing and what what we th- feel of what Three Rach is doing. Bobby is 
essentially he's in his comfort zone, but he is taking two people out of their comfort zone. And he's if like, all three of them he's are elevating. Zone, he's elevating, elevating the two people yes. that are with him. He yeah. is, and like, if all three of them were out of their comfort zone, we would have been in a problem because I think someone needs to be comfortable. And if it's going to bring them up, yeah. he's bringing them up. This is, like, not the scenario that would have happened, but if Bobby is, like, on an ego trip and says, this is what we're doing, and then Hu Young and Sun were just kind of left in the dust, like, then we get a bad performance, but that's not what happened, because Bobby is not that kind of person. (laughs) No. This, on the other hand, seems like, one, I think the thing is, like, three Rachas there. Three Rachas already such a unit that they're like, no, we're just gonna make a cool track that we like, and... Hong Jun and Min Hyuk are along for the ride. And they outnumber they, everyone else of there. None their what are, is there. What are Hong Jun and Min Hyuk gonna do when there's three of three Racha there? Well, like, not just that. They are given full control over it. Yeah. And, like, they because... can't... The two of them by themselves, unless... The, the two of them together even really can't voice an opinion that's like, no, I don't want to do this because three Racha is just there and it's so prevalent. And it's like, because that's just kind of think... what they have to do. Yeah, because three Racha is just making a three Racha track. This song is just a three Racha song. It is a three Racha track. And then the, it's and like... And the thing is, ugh. we... Min Hyuk... Uh, Min Hyuk. Min Hyuk has done solo music. He has. Min Hyuk has done solo music, and a lot of it has been, like, a, it's more v- actual, like, vocals, and he does sing in them, but, like, it is very rap-heavy at times. So he has a sound. He has a sound that works for him. He knows what works for him. Hong Joon does a lot of 18 songs. He knows what works, and he does produce songs. The thing is... If it would have been one member of Stray Kids, if it was just Bang Chan, I think that this would have been a better performance because Bang Chan would have had to, like, there would have been more collaboration. It would have sounded like, because the thing is, with Full Dash, you don't have three people that can contribute ideas. Because no. this is Sun Wu and Hui Young trying to do something that they're out of their comfort zone. They're like, we don't know what to do, but we need the guidance from you, Bobby. If this yes. performance would have been so much better if you had Hong Joon, Min Hyuk, and then just Bang Chan. Uh, even though we, we have our opinions on Bang Chan, but if it was those three, yes. that would have been a collaboration because it's a three- Because you a have different... the three people who can produce stuff together, and then, yes. they have, then they have to work together and figure it out yes. themselves. And then it becomes not just a three Roger song, it becomes something different. This is three people that have experience in this and can do this- it would have been very different than Full Dash, still. Yeah. It, I don't think they would have come up with something similar to Full Dash, No, obviously. I don't think there's any but, scenario in which that team is making a song even similar to Full Dash. But I do think that it would have been a different kind of good. Like, yeah. that collaboration is very different than what this collaboration would be just because of the people involved. Because, and like, I think Hong Jing also people produces... could be good. Yeah. Hong Jing produces music, but I feel like when he's by himself here and he's got, like, all of three Roger there, I don't think there's really a way he can express opinions that are, like, where his, like, if he wants to do something completely different, I don't think really I feel like three Racha just steamrolls. Exactly, yeah. They steamroll the performance, and I think that that's the problem here is that just it just sounds like a three racha song with two extra people. And the other thing is that Min Yuk is barely here. Minya comes in for, like, the last 30 seconds, and lives for it, and then leaves. Yep. Then he's gone. And it's like, <sighs> so the thing with this performance, and this is also the winning performance as well, which is absolutely incorrect um, in, like, a lot of ways, but mm-hmm. it's because it's it's a more idol-friendly rap performance is what it is. Everything about this is an idol rap performance because it's a three racha song. And because half of your judging panel for this round are rookie idols, guess which song's gonna win? The Show Me The Money performance, or the idol rap friendly performance. Exactly. And then also you have the, again, steamrolling that is Three Racha. Three Racha has a reputation for themselves amongst especially the the younger idols. Mm -hmm. Of course they're gonna like it. They've been said, they've been told, and they've been going on and on that Three Racha is like what they want to be when they grow up as idols. Because they're the mm-hmm. new hot thing. Of course they're yep. going to win. Especially yeah. from the idols. And I think they win like 22 to like 11 or something, which is really annoying. Because I feel like there's, it's like Full Dash is 100% the, the better rap. Like generally, like that's the better rap performance. And the thing that I see is like thrown out there as like a reason as to why the other team won is because they use more props and it's like more of like a, a, performa- whatever, like a, a performance, quote unquote. 
But it's like, this is also, at the end of the day, like, this is a rap round. So I feel yeah. like uh, the team that has the better rap song should have won. Mm-hmm. And they didn't. Because the other round was more idol-friendly, and that is what we got from that. That's because sort of, of the how panel the cookie is crumbles. Rookie idols. Yep. And I think the other team probably realized it, the Bobby Sun Wu Liang performance. Once they found out that ha- more than half the judging panel were, like, rookie idol groups, they probably knew at that point they weren't probably going to win. Because it's kind of, like, intimidating, this type of music. Like, this straight-up, like, show me the money, like, kind of, like, half a diss track at Mnet. So, like, it's kind of intimidating for, like, you know, rookie girl group members, maybe, so. A little bit. They, Especially they when they hear the words, wouldn't... fuck that shit. Oh, yeah. They also censor out, um, Bobby, because it's one of the, one of the lyrics is running away from your bullshit, and they just censor out bullshit. Yeah. Um, in the performance, I only realized that he's actually saying the word because I it did not bleep out in his fan camp, but they do just like censor that out of the performance. Of course it is. Yeah. Because Bobby no. doesn't care. He, Bobby does, says he stuff, doesn't care. Jack shit. Well, no, Bobby has said that in his solo albums for years that he just. Bobby, I think, has stopped caring about this idol industry years ago. Especially yeah. after all the bullshit that Icon's been through, I don't think Bobby cares. Uh, between everything that Bobby's been through and everything that he's been through because of YG's bullshit, I don't mm-hmm. think they care anymore. I think right. Icon is just in it for for the fun of it now. Mm-hmm. So that was the that was probably the the performance that angered me the most. From now, I, we I have, just... I'm so angered. I'm a little bit of, I'm less angered about the other two, but I had a lot of anger for that one. In particular. Yeah, that one that one makes me angry. The other one, the... I think I'm gonna get increasingly less angry yes, for these other two. That's what so. I'm saying. <laughs> We started off with the most anger, and we're going to be less angry. Uh, so next round is the dance round. Yes. And this is, again, one team did not understand the assignment. And this is and really the, the other epitome of, of one not team understanding who did the not understand the assignment. So we start off again with the better performance. Yes, and so this is going to be Taeyang of SF9, um, Juyun of the Boys, and DK of Icon. They, again, sent their main dancers to the performance as they should have done for the dance performance. Yes. So, as was the are. assignment. Was the assignment. They are doing the assignment they were given. And they are thriving in it. This is like, I this, I don't know what this song is, but it is a just I a very traditional- I think it's like a traditional Korean- I don't think it's a real song or anything. They might it's have just, just made it It's just a dance performance. Yeah. It's not- it doesn't it's got no be a song. Ly- it's got no lyrics. Doesn't, it's just an instrumental. Yep, it's just a traditional Korean song. Yeah, it doesn't need to be a song because it's a dance performance. They're just yep. dancing. It kind of reminds me dancing. a little bit of Hit the Stage. It is a little Hit the Stage-like, yes. And they have props and they have fire and it's fun and Tang's they're driving. they got a sword. <laughs> There's swords. We bring back swords. It doesn't remind do, me... It tells, like, a whole story. It's like they're performing, like, an act out of, like, a musical or something. It's, like, very, very yeah. good. It's very good. They got wigs. It's great. Yeah. Also, this um interaction a little bit less wholesome just because Taeyang and Jiyeon and DK are like the most socially awkward people in the world and like don't know how to interact with each other at all. Yeah. Like they do not like they do not speak to each other. Like it's very funny in that way, but they like just do not know how to talk to people. They really don't. Also, there's a beheading in this. There is a beheading in the middle of the performance. We live but like it is that is essentially they're telling the story about a singular king and each of them is playing like a different Fred sort of era personality of the, of the king yeah yeah it's very good it's very well done it's, it's a very, very lyrical dance performance too it's yeah. not so much like a k-pop dance they're they're definitely trying to go more lyrical style like but dancing. also it's like super impressive it's different it's very different and then, and you can genuinely tell, again, that this is slightly more, like, they're, they're doing this, I feel like, I feel like the issue was, and we can say this for all of the performances, really, is that, um, one team elevated the assignment to just, to the logical next degree, the yes. other team kept it idle. Yeah. Kept it very idle E. Yes. Whereas you, even with like, again, what is, if you have a rap performance, you can do idol rap and do a good, and do a, like a over the top idol rap performance. But I feel like if or you're you can the, elevate it yeah. and go full hip hop and just and do a hip hop performance. 
if you're given the chance, like, on the show, like, you're not going to have again to do, like, an actual hip-hop performance, like, why wouldn't you, honestly? Exactly. Like, you're not going to be able like, to do that again. Like, these groups are never going to have the to opportunity have, to do this, to do this like, do lyrical this. Korean traditional dance performance. Like, it's and that really is, great. Yeah, and it's something that will be memorable. I feel like, again, you talk about certain performances, Barbara, you have, like, we talk about the stage. There's a lot of performances on Hit the Stage. We have a video coming out that is ranking all of the Hit the Stage performances. A lot mm -hmm. of them, very forgettable. A yeah. lot of them, A lot of them are bad. Not. A lot of them are very bad. A lot bad. of them are bad. A, but a lot of them are just very forgettable that you will never remember they happened. Yeah. But that Taman, um, goodbye performance. And then the Amazing. Hoya, the the Hoya, Hoya performance. Hoya. Amazing. You, and those no, were all type of like dance performances that you're not going to get out of normal K-pop idols just no. doing like solo music or just K-pop stuff. Like it's different, and it's it's different. New, it's fun, and it leaves more of an impression that way. I mm -hmm. think. And even and it becomes, if you look, yeah, it becomes I was saying, a even moment. if you look at this round, the equivalent of this round in the Kingdom or not in the Kingdom, but in the Queendom series, mm -hmm. like for the dance round. They got, like, individual dance performances, but a lot of them pulled out, like, dancing styles that they're not gonna- they don't do, like, yeah. in their regular groups. Like, Yayan pulled out, like, a sh like a full lyrical, like, dancing ballet performance, and then- You had just did a tribute Michael to Michael Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. And so all of them did stuff there that I think is very along the similar, like, style of what- this group was doing on Kingdom, where it's like, well, we want to do a dance performance, let's put a lot of effort into doing, like, a very different, unique dance performance. And so, I think they are definitely doing a better job here than what we got from the other team. Yeah, and then at the end, you end up with... And then at the... Like, you end up with a performance that is maybe not gonna win. And it didn't win. Spoilers. But... Spoilers Will I win. remember this? Yes. Yes, I'll remember this... I and will. the thing is, is, I see how it's, like, not, like, a top-tier dance performance, but number one in comparison to what they were against. Top easily, tier. Easily, but so also, much, especially so much better. Especially considering who's in this performance. None mm -hmm. of these groups, I think, are particularly known for their dancing. Icon barely dances, because Icon is a yeah. hip-hop group. The boys, well, has sure. amazing dancing, especially on those Road Kingdom performances, their performances and their choreos, fine. Like they're fine. They're, they're not fine. They're a fine dance they're group. Not, yeah, they're fine. SF9, eh. And I like them. They're, they're serviceable, but they're not Their choreo is not, is not like a top tier dancing. Um, yeah. Their choreography is usually, yeah. I do think in a way they ended up with some of the better dancers generally on the show. Yeah. Um, Because I think Taeyang is very good and I think Jiyeon is also very good. Yes. DK is a lot better than I thought he was, actually. Um, he's very good he with a... facial. He's very good with oh, facial expressions. Facial he is expressions. absolutely great with that. And he I has also, a lot of performance through that alone. I, I mean, I also, you can never go wrong with sword fighting, mm -hmm. generally. Like, I think that they also were able to find a great concept that's just... It's not that it's played, like, again, a traditional Korean concept, not the most original, but does it give you a lot of opportunities for props? Does it give you a lot of opportunities yeah. for iconic moments? Does it give you a very recognizable look and feel and something unique in that way? Yes, because none of these groups have done that as a concept. At least oh, not yeah. yet. And I think they did, I, with this concept, I think it was very easy for them to sort of write in a way for each of them to be able to show off, like, their individual dancing and stuff, too. So I think mm -hmm. that was also very, very good. Yeah. So now we get to the worst performance. Um, which is, oh my god, it's a disaster. <laughs> it's a disaster. It I have... the, and I think this is, I think, my least favorite thing I've seen on this show so far. It is horrible. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, yeah. I... Yeah, no, you're probably right. So, so this is where um we're gonna start the group off with really just we did not follow the assignment out the window. We are not like we were. Not, we did not follow the instructions here because we have essentially all of all of eight teases here except for Hong Jung who's in vocal and or not Hong Hong Jung's in rap and then Jong Ho is in vocal, and then we have Peniel of Pizza B being the Pizza B representative. And because then we again, have Minho and oh, Ayan and Felix. I don't think we I don't think we mentioned this. Chang Sub disappeared. Chang Sub is gone. Like he is not present this entire round. 
because he is they said absolutely gone for well, this whole the fact part. that b2b is down to like four members because of like military and people leaving then they get down to three because someone just decided like nah i'm done there is and there is no explanation as to where he is or like they don't what acknowledge he is doing. he's gone we don't acknowledge that he's not there which is very weird um because in Queendom, when someone, like, Sol Hyun was missing for this round in Queendom, but they said she was busy. Like, Ro, we know Rowoon is injured and also busy. We know Mingi's not here because he's, like, injured. injured. Chang Sub is just gone. Like, we have no they explanation where he, he is, what are he's doing. He's just not here. And so he, um, so because of that, we got, we have Peniel. You know, the dance center of B2B, Peniel. Mm-hmm. So yeah, every every group gets one B two B representative because that's all they have left. Yep, they also and, elect Peniel the leader of this dance performance, which is also sure. a very questionable choice. So essentially, which I mean, when you have half of Stray Kids, half half all of AT, all all essentially all of ATs, all of ATs, of ATs except for two. Yeah, <laughs> and then one, and then a third of B two B. Peniel, and your person is Peniel, <laughs> and the person is Peniel. Who was there by default because he wasn't going to go to rap and he wasn't going to go to... To vocal To still. vocal, so he's there by default. We have Peniel. Mind you, this is even the more confusing part. This is a dance performance, right? Yes. This, the, the assignment was... This is a dance make, performance. <laughs> make a dance performance. What did we decide to do? We decided cover to make a bad wolf. cover of Wolf is what happened. Not even here. a bad cover of Wolf. Just a cover of Wolf, period, because Wolf is a bad song. So number one, Wolf, yeah, number one, Wolf is a bad song. There is nothing at all you can do to that song to make it good or interesting in the slightest. So I think picking that song is already setting yourself up for failure. Because I, like, I don't know a single person who can take that song seriously at all. Like, no, I like that song mainly because it's so ridiculous it's so and stupid. stupid. And I think EXO, even at the time, because this was still 12 member EXO, you still had Chris there having to do this. Yeah. Looking at pe certain people and being like, oh, you're here. And they're like, I think EXO has realized that it was stupid. Yeah, it is really. But like, I feel like bad subsequently. Song choice subsequently because it's an exo song and i don't think a lot of people again growl has been covered to death and they're yeah. like well what is a not obvious song to cover ah wolf, wolf. and i'm like let's do wolf mm -hmm. and i'm like no <laughs> no one Please wants a no. cover of wolf i don't think anyone in 2021 is asking for a cover of exo's wolf like there is nobody asking for that and so the other part that they do, besides picking Exo's Wolf to cover, is we're gonna also record vocals for it. So now it's, like, now we're not doing a dance performance. Now we're just covering Wolf. And yeah. it really takes away from the performance a lot, the fact that it has now vocals in it. And they have to focus on singing because, like, again, this singing, is Kingdom, yeah. so you have to actually sing. So the vocals suffer. The vocals I don't think are good, <laughs> number one. Um, because all of their main vocals are in the vocal performance, and all of their rappers are in the rap performance. So, so they have just... all of your sub-vocals trying to cover the entirety of Exo's Wolf now. Not the fact that also they have to cover the rap part of Exo's Wolf, so all the sub-rappers have to cover I know! Them. It's so funny just thinking about that. It's like, you've decided to make a vocal cover of this song where all of your main vocals and main rappers are not here. And <laughs> like... for as much as this is a bad song, I'll give it this. EXO has vocalists. Mm -hmm. EXO has, like, you have, ev like, I'm sorry, it's not the, e there's notes in there that I'm like, that are not the easiest thing to cover generally. No. And you're giving that to all the sub-vocalists. Mm-hmm. And it's- And this suffers. Oh, man. It suffers, and because of the whole performance, because of the fact that they've recorded vocalists over it, and the fact that it's nine a nine-person performance- it comes off as a cover performance, which could have gone in either of the two previous rounds, because it doesn't feel like it fits here. And if and you would have shown me this performance, I wouldn't have picked out that this was supposed to be a dance performance round, because it just feels like a cover. Well, not just that, but also, and they don't really change the dance. This isn't, they don't change this the is dance. Just... And it's, it's weird, because they add in stunts, but the stunts that they add in are very useless. And the also, one in, they take two, away... It's, there's two in particular that I don't like. One of them is, I think, Wu Young from ATs climbs up onto a tower of people. 
and he just gets on the tower and he just sits there. And I'm like, yeah. what was the point? Like, and what was the point of that? Him, that did not like, need to be a tower of people. We're just injuring someone for no reason because of that. And the fact that he could have, like, that he doesn't jump off. Like, there's not an actual stunt no, to it. No, he just, like, sits there. And I'm like, this was the most useless thing we could have had him done. And then there's the other one where they have Felix jump onto Wu Young, like, off of a platform. And I'm like, this doesn't even look cool, and there's way too big of a risk one of you is gonna get injured, and it's for a stunt that means nothing, essentially. Also, I think it was like, Son you... that jump that had the tower. Oh, Son's on the tower? Yeah. yeah. So Son's on... It's, like, very weird. You, also, you can barely see it. To be it. There. Yeah, I went back into the performance. You can barely see it because none of the lights are on. Yeah. Like, it's pointless it's useless and they took out the only impressive thing about that which was the fucking silhouette that tree, tree thing they have the backup dancers doing silhouette trees and i'm like sure why i are, guess but like yeah why not you because the the most impressive thing about that performance was the silhouette tree because that became an iconic thing for exo so why are we not doing the silhouette tree it's it's so it's so weird and it's like there because it is also weirdly structured like a dance cover there are also just parts where people are just kind of standing and posing and like not dancing and i'm like this is like not the like way you should be executing this round at all like you just completely missed the point here and it was it's sad that it got rewarded for completely missing the entire point of the round too which is very annoying yeah i don't the only reason I'm less mad is because I do recognize that the other team's performance was not, like, a top-tier performance. I mean, the other team's performance not is like, an A, not in, like... It's A-tier, yeah. but not S-tier. Like, I still think it's right, very good. Right, not, like, Full Dash. It's, like, not less full good than Full dash. dash, but it is so much better than what than this. this other... This wolf cover, yeah. Like, the other performance is not so good that I have to get vehemently right. angered. But am I oh, yeah. peeved and am I somewhat oh, angered? Yeah. Yes. 100%. This, and because, the fact that it's also it's so residual bad. anger from the other thing, where I'm like, wait a minute, we're continuing down this track? Okay. Mm-hmm. So the that Mayfly was The team should have won one round um, only. Yes. In this and that is thing. the vocal round. The vocal round, which yes. Will, which, is, which we're going to talk about now, because um, the one team, again, understood the assignment. Each of uh, yes. them sent two vocalists because, again, they're big groups. They have vocals. They have they a have, lot of people. There's a lot of people that can take the vocals. And honestly, these are three teams that have, except for, again, not counting the one team that's only vocals. Yes. This, these teams have very good vocalists. Yeah. So here is the thing with the vocal performance round is that the winner of this round was decided as soon as they split the teams in half and B2B was on the other team. Yep. As soon, the team that has Unquang wins this round and is how this round is going to play out, like, 10 out of 10 times you do this round. Because whatever team is Unquang wins the round, there is no iteration of three teams on the show that are going to beat Unquang at all, ever. Because the thing is, Unquang by himself would have won this round. Unquang by himself beats all five of the other teams combined. Like, it is, he is that good, and... I think that good at picking a song and re- rearranging it in a way that makes his team members, like, stand out. That whoever he is with, it's like any iteration of groups that Nkwang is with is winning this round easily and by a lot. Like, it is, that is how this round was, is gonna go, and it would go and no it matter did go. who was on the team. But yeah. let's start with the, with the, it's one, it's one? Yeah, yeah yes. It's one team first. Mm-hmm. So in the It's One's team, we have Insong and Jaehyun of SF9, Sangyun and New of The Boys, and then Jinhwan and June of Icon. And they decided to do Spark by Taeyeon. Yes. Which was interesting. Both of these groups decided to do solo female songs. Maybe a female solo songs, and like not even the most popular songs by each of the female soloists either. It was like no, they went I for would like, say the, like the weird choice, the mid tier songs from the female soloists. Yeah. Yes. So they did Spark. Which I think automatically not doing a ballad probably hurt them. I would so, say yeah. it probably hurt them. So this is what happens is once they once and Kwang's on the other team and we know the other team is winning, now every decision we're making is just deciding how large of a margin they're gonna lose by. So not picking a ballad, we're making the margin bigger. I think also them sending six people was probably not a good idea either. I do think they probably would have been up. better. 
it divides sending it up too much. Sending one person a group, I think they're probably better at yeah. sending only three people. I also think there are Taeyeon songs that showcase her vocals far better. I think if they would have picked, like, I or something, I, maybe, that's a better song. Or even something like, um, I don't know, there's, there's a like bunch of ballads. ballads that are better choices for yeah. that, too. Like, I think it, South Korea loves ballads. They love female there's a, ballads. There's a lot of ballads they could have picked from. I think to be competitive at all in this round, they needed to send only three people and they needed to do a ballad. Yeah. And so the fact that they're doing Spark with Tan and they have six people is already, we're losing by a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then the problem is the ending. The ending, because poor Insung, who has now cried on this show twice. twice. I feel so bad for him. He's one of the oldest people here. He is like the fifth or sixth oldest person on the show, and he's cried twice on this show, and I just feel so bad I for feel him. Bad for him I feel bad for him I feel really bad. Um, but he doesn't, he's it's supposed to do the high note at the end of the song, he doesn't hit the note. Um, and I think it's mainly because of nerves. He, because he hits it in the rehearsal perfectly fine, but he doesn't hit it in the performance quite. And it's unfortunate, and he does blame himself for the reason their team is lost, and I don't think Which, that honestly, is the reason they lost the at all. Which, honestly, not the reason you lost. I also think the issue is that you're, it's a lot of very different vocalists. I think that three would have been better because it would have blended yes. more. But I also think, like, you have someone like June, whose vocal character is very distinct, June, I think having June is like a blessing and a curse because yeah. June is so distinct, but I don't think June can blend well with anybody. Because that's, that's the thing. I think that if they would have had, to have June, you needed three people. Yes. If it was less people, he could be distinct and the other two could work around him. I think he if cannot said, work with five yeah. other, with, I well, think with five other people. If the team is June and then New and then Insung or Jaehyun, I think either one would be fine. Yeah. I think your the, the performance is probably better. Yeah, not that, I think six not people that is anyone, too many. Yeah, not that the others are bad. No, the others I just are think great, that it's too many but, people to have in the performance. Yes, yeah, I think that the performance gets cluttered. Yes, and they do do a lot of really good harmonies. So because they have six people, they can make really fun interesting yeah. harmonies and that part of the performance is really oh, good oh it's great but because they're not doing they can't do it the whole time obviously so they In have way, to split the song into the too thing. many parts but here's the thing for as much as i think yes this performance probably should have lost to the mayfly performance it's not bad like Overall, it's a still a good I performance think for me mainly because i don't like ballads and the other team did a pure ballad yeah. i almost prefer this performance just I do like I think, it better because I like I, this it is more. A, this is a song I don't like that they arranged in a way that I like it a lot now. Yeah, <laughs> because and they also, arrange it into like a weird like like live band like rock version almost, and it's very yeah. it's very cool. And, and there's like, like all the fire, the, and it's very the fire, cool. the harmonies. Yeah, and like it's just a bunch of very distinct voices that I really enjoy listening to. Like all of them are great, and all of them sound amazing. Yeah. And I think that, for me personally, I like this performance where I do see why I will concede that, that it probably should have lost. It wins because yeah, it should have lost probably to the other one. I do, I also like it better because I also don't like ballads, but I see exactly. why the other one wins and why it deserves to win by the margin yeah. that it won by. I um, also, uh, I don't think it deserved to win by the margin it won I by. I think, I think it, I think it probably did because I think they heard the in-song voice crack at the end of the song and any hope they had of getting a single vote just went out the window Very at that well. point. I really do think that it was like the in-song voice crack maybe widened the margin from zero to 33 instead of like two or one to like 32 or 31. Very Like well. I think that's was the nail in the coffin. But I they mean, were already, everything leading up to that, they were already losing by a very large margin. I mean, I with. agree. Like, I'll take that. I'll, I'll admit to that. But generally, I think that this, this group deserved more in that I really like what they're doing. I do. I enjoyed it a lot. Like, the beginning, the opening of the song where it's just, like, each one of them comes in individually and it's, like, a very pretty harmony. Yeah. It was so, so good. And I think this is this is definitely the only round where both performances were very good. Um, and it's, like, no one did bad in this round. It's just that one was better, and that was definitely not the case for the other rounds. So. Mm-hmm. I am less mad just because it's like we didn't get anything bad out of this round. No, I'm I'm actually quite happy with what we got. Mm -hmm. And so then we get the other performance, which is love poem by love IU. Love poem by IU. And this is Unkwang of Beats to Be segment of um, Stray Kids and Jungko of ATs. Yes. And 
a lot of this is Un Quang. Un Quang is really the like essentially the whole performance. Like he is a big part of the song choice. He's a big part of the arrangement and the harmonies. He has a lot of the big killing points the of the moments. song. He is yeah. easily carrying the whole performance. He is 100% elevating both Jong Ho and Segmin with him significantly. And the thing is, Jong Ho is Not that either of them really are bad. Good, yeah, both yeah. of them are pretty, both of them are good, and Jong Ho has had, like, amazing moments in this show. Like, yeah. he's, again, any of the big moments from the 80s performances in terms of notes have been him. Yes. But, in this performance, Un Quang, Quang kills. is really just, like, doing everything like for that performance (laughs) and i think it is good that i think the three people that they had to work with their work in their favor really well because segment thrives in like a lower like he's not like a like a jong ho like hits the high notes kind of vocal. he thrives much more in like a lower pitched vocal tone so they have him singing that range with like more harmony stuff and then Unquang and Jung Ho can just hit essentially whatever notes like they fucking want to because they can. And I think I'd, I think they just had I think three people whose voices worked really well with each other, and that only made the harmonies and everything they were doing with the song even better than mm-hmm. the arrangement was already. So yeah, I think that this whole performance was the best Mayfly did. And For I think- sure. I think they put all of their effort into that one vocal performance and were just kind of, like, doing whatever the hell they wanted with the other two. <laughs> well, the thing with this vocal performance is that I think Unquang really took charge. Yeah. And was like, no, this is gonna be... Because I don't think Unquang is hasn't particularly had a chance to really shine yeah. himself in this show because, again, a lot of the... Other than that first performance where they did... Because um, it's really been Min Hyuk who's been the center of their other performances. Yeah. It's a lot of the attention's been it's on It's a him. lot of Min Hyuk. And then also the fact of, like, they had to do not as many vocal-heavy performances. Like, they had to do backdoor and things like that. Yeah. Where they were put in a position where, like, he can't, like, truly belt the way he, I think he's wanted to. Right. And now this is really where he's been. Where he was given, like, free rage to, like, do all of, like, the vocal nonsense that you ever wanted to. And if and he now, just and is, he, like, and going full it. for it. Yeah. He, he really just did he's it. He's doing it. Yeah. So that was that one. And that also won. Only one that I agree with. That's the only honest. one that, that's the only one of their team that should have won that performance. And they won all three for some reason. Which is upsetting because i don't think even the producers of the show had expected for one team to win all three i think they expected a 2-1 split for that and because this is a 15 point round each team got an additional 5,000 points that the other three teams are not getting at all anything for and so i'm pretty sure this now means that icon and sf9 and the boys have like Can't a zero percent shot of winning like there's no they way they cannot win the show anymore yeah i don't think they can win unless they get like a hundred percent of the audience vote and even I think then the i don't think team, that's mathematically possible the only team of them that i think even had a chance at coming close was icon and i think this was really just like i don't the think they have the that anymore yeah yeah and think about it the three teams we thought would make it interesting. Three that are up there. Because I don't think Icon wants a reality show anymore. I think they're done. I don't yeah, I don't think Icon really wants it anyway. I, and it's like, it's... I can just tell so much from their next performance because they, like, we're not going to talk a whole lot about it, but, like, they don't want to be there. Like, they are so, they're so done at this point. They don't want it. And honestly, I don't blame them. I mm. wouldn't want it. I was just, this is very random, but I was just reminded of, I keep going back to this stupid wolf performance. Wolf, 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 baby wolf. Um, cause I just need to express my upsetting, how, how, how much Peniel yeah. there was in that Also, I just started singing uh, the better. Cause I need to make also, that Also, the note. better, I just did start singing the better wolf, which is Trey Sings Wolf Baby. Trey Sings Wolf Baby. Oh, that's a great better song. Wolf. I love that song. Very cute wolf, song. Wolf, wolf, Trey Sings baby, Wolf Baby. Wolf, 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 wolf. wolf, wolf. Cute. That's a free promotion to Tracing, who are a dead, a group. dead K-pop group. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on from that. Um. Yeah. So this concludes Kingdom Round Three Part One. Hooray! I Hooray. guess I don't know. I'm done. Um. 
I want to talk briefly about what they're doing the next round. Is sure. essentially they're allowed to do whatever they want. Essentially, they're again icon. ready to do whatever. The, they again can just yeah free reign. Free reign because this show has um, not been free reign enough for these groups. No, and I and I honestly think it's really funny that they named this because it was like we're gonna. There's no now we're gonna get rid of the boundaries between teams, and I feel like it was a reference to the fact that. For that round one where they had the three teams with the incredibly high stage budget who apparently weren't uh, told the rules correctly and the three teams with the much lower stage budget. This is I a feel do-over. like that was a direct reference to that. It was like, we're not going to, here, you can spend as much money as you this want. This is a now. do-over like, of that round. Just do whatever you yeah. want and <laughs> also <laughs> don't think again. about the budget. Don't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> But so we've seen Icons and Stray Kids. Icon covers Pretty Savage by Blackpink, and Stray Kids does a two to two to two by Blackpink. Choices were made. Um, and then the next round, um, because we've seen the songs that they're gonna cover in the preview. Um, so ATs is doing Answer. I'm pretty sure, I'm although a- it sounds sus- also suspiciously like EXO's Mama as well. Maybe it's so a, that's maybe somehow it is maybe somehow both, both because Stray Kids technically did God's Menu and yeah. do 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 Even though we've already but done ATs, God's Menu, I know. But ATs does have the thing of they put classical music into every single one of the performances, so I have a feeling it might just be that. And Possibly, it's answer, but it's got like a weird classical music element. Um, SF9 is doing Taman's move. I'm which excited. Is very exciting. I'm genuinely I'm very, very excited, excited for that, that one. That is the one I am excited yeah. for. I'm really excited for that because I it's like SF9 is getting increasingly sexier the more rounds we go, and I'm like, yes, I'm living this is for what that. I want. This is what I wanted for you. <laughs> and then um, B2B is gonna perform Blue Moon, which I'm pretty sure is a B side of theirs. Yeah, I think so. Unless there's a K pop song called Blue Moon that I'm forgetting. Unless about. there's a yeah, a random K pop song named Blue Moon that I don't know about and can't recognize. Maybe a random ballad. Yeah. And then the boys are gonna do EXO's Monster. So it was like this More week EXO. was YG week. Next week is apparently SM week, I guess. Great. Sure. But I'm glad we've gotten rid of this stupid panel. We won't have the panel anymore for round three, part two. Yay. And then we'll do round three, and then it's a finale, and then we don't have to talk about the show anymore. No. Um, we don't. Which is, thankfully. And then all of these groups can get back to their normal schedules and release music and not be bothered by it anymore, so. Yay. I don't- and then- good. Because I don't want to talk about it anymore, and I already am done talking about it. I'm tired of it. I'm glad that the end is near. I'm very happy the end is near. I'm very happy about that. Let it come very quickly and swiftly. Um, and yes, this has been our round three, part one, Kingdom Legendary War recap. Hooray. Um, if you're listening to us on YouTube, we are also on all major podcasting platforms, and if you are listening to us there, we are also on YouTube, where we post all our episodes along with fun clip videos occasionally and also we're gonna try out new youtube shorts um for a little bit yay so we also have a twitter account um, where we tweet about all our episodes and when they come out if you want to follow us there and also we have a k-pop collection instagram and today i just started a tiktok account as well yay for tiktok TikTok and our want to for some reason follow a podcast on tiktok you can do that yay if you want to just see more more of it's us. It's essentially all I'm putting on there is just funny, out of context, random clips from our episodes. So that is what I will be going there. So, yes. Um, and we will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye.